The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, he says. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, you see there's the religious thing coming in, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, <gasps> drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Three things to notice then in this passage. Here's where we're going. Firstly, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Secondly, they present an ugly picture. That's a summary of all that stuff there. And thirdly, live like that and you won't get to heaven. Is that straightforward enough? And the first one of those is, is, is kind of interesting, isn't it? Sin is obvious. The sins of the human nature, the sins of the flesh of the human nature, they're obvious. It's the first thing he wants to say to us. And that's a really, really important thing. Because what sin most wants to be is not obvious. Isn't that the case? It wants to be hidden. <coughs> sin wants to hide away what it actually is and what actually is going on. But actually, Paul is saying, it's downstage front centre with the spotlight on it. And that realisation is something that will help us a great deal, of course, in our battle with our sinful human nature. It's obvious. Since the first big cover-up began in the Garden of Eden, sinful human nature has sold fig leaf cover-ups. And when it hears God coming, it runs away and hides. Hides, you see? What sinful human nature wants to do with its sin is to keep its shameful things hidden, cover up its errors and misjudgments, guard its privacy. There's been a lot in the news about that. What is privacy? What is that? Because on the day that matters in front of a certain big white throne, there is no privacy. The thoughts of every heart will be revealed. What is that? Sinful human nature wants to keep all that hidden up, clear its internet search browser history, and hide. So now here's a guide. Here's a guide for you to hold couture. Are you ready? Fig leaf couture. I thought you'd love that. Here's what the sinful human nature says about its sin when it's trying to hide it away. It says, it's normal! The suggestion is, everybody does this. It's normal. The suggestion is usually it would not be normal for things to be otherwise. I was talking about this with a missionary friend of mine uh, just before, a few days ago, on Google+, Plus, which is a marvellous thing, because uh, you can talk in circles and you think nobody else can hear you. Uh, because you're just talking to the people you're talking to, it's not quite the case, because if they retweet you, as it were, it goes everywhere, it becomes viral. <clears throat> but a missionary friend of mine was chatting about this, the way that this normal thing gets rolled out. It's normal, it's normal, it's normal, actually. And uh, he reminded me of a, a recent case in the tabloid papers under the noise abatement legislation, where a certain judge famously commented, my wife and I have been happily married for many years and never have we felt the need to shriek. Do you remember that case? No. <laughs> Marvellous case. The judge was absolute star. He came out with some absolute blindness. What is normal? That was at the heart of the case. What is normal? Now, whatever the rights and wrongs of that, it remains true that the justifying argument, in their case for disturbing the neighbours, was this. It's normal, or it's natural, or something of that sort. So here's the norm, says Paul. This is the standard. Here is the pattern for human life on earth. It is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever, ever. It is to turn from sin and trust in Jesus and live by the Spirit. Isn't that what the passage is all being about? To live in the Spirit? Here is the norm. To glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And all these other things that are coming out here, all this huge list that Paul's got, is not normal. It arises from a departure from the norm that arose in the Garden of Eden, do you remember? When they departed from the norm and God had put there for the human life that he created and the world that he made around it. It's not normal. It's a departure from the norm. That's the whole point. This work of the sinful human nature, it is not normal and it is obvious what it's doing. You can't hide it away. It's obvious what this is. It's not natural and it's not sophisticated. Oh, here we go. The sophisticated pattern of life is here. Yes. We're sophisticated people. We live like this, and it's a bohemian lifestyle that's being described. Here's a classic of fig leaf couture from a leading cosmopolitan design house. Let's take something that is not elegant, that does not enhance human dignity, really is not art, and just give it that name. 
really is not cultured, and give it that name. So much more concealing to say something in French, isn't it? Sophisticated. Latin, of course, is even better. If you can call it something in Latin, that's a marvellous cover-up for sin. Marvellous. My head's full of, full of messy examples that I don't really want to share. I've picked a less obvious one here, deliberately. No, that is? Helen's bedroom last week. Not Helen's bedroom last week. <laughs> Heaven forbid. No, it was not. Tracy Emmons' bed. It's Tracy Emmons' bed. Thank you, dear, for rescuing this. Helen's <laughs> bedroom. No, not my wife's bedroom. No, 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 no. Not the uni. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know the story. Now, is that... Bring this back to reality. Is that really sophisticated? Is it art? Is it marvellous? It's dirty. It's dirty, Caleb. It's so dirty it's in more ways than one. It's messy, so it's good. It's messy. No, messy is not good. <laughs> messy is bad, in fact. Let me just make that clear. <laughs> yeah. It's not really sophisticated. It's just giving a justifying voice to an unjustifiable departure from God's norm for life in human society. When you go into that bed, what's in it and what it's about. Giving a justifying voice to an unjustifiable departure from God's norm, normal, for life. In human society. Oh, it's, 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 it's normal. It's sophisticated. Oh, here's another one. It's mature. <laughs> it's grown up. The sinful nature has got a terrible way of justifying the unjustifiable by the attribution of maturity. We're all grown ups here. Aww. We're all over 21. <laughs> so what? So what if you were over 21? Sin is a lot older than 21. And it's still sin. Because being over 21... Are you 21 yet? No. Being over 21 never makes it right. Here's another stylish creation coming at you. Last one, I think. From the uh, classic of fig leaf haute couture. This one, it's enlightened. You get this on, uh, on Radio 4, and you get this on um, Newsnight and, and programmes like that, where you know we're, we're the wise ones, we're enlightened, we know. Programmes like that that approve of sin, and say that approving of sin is somehow morally correct, when it obviously is not. It's obvious, as Paul. The works of the sin sinful human nature are obvious. And on any amount of trying to say, well, this is the enlightened way to think, this is the enlightened way to be. Rubbish. We're asked, we're expected to be, here's, here's a word, anti-homophobic, for example. And that doesn't mean what we would want to be with people who pursue a homosexual lifestyle, which is open, encouraging, helpful, positive, loving, caring, wherever we can. But it is asking us to approve of things that we can't approve of because they're not actually biblical norms, but against that. We are asked to be tolerant of all sorts of things, and there's lots of other issues, let's actually pick on that one. We're being asked to be tolerant, which doesn't mean bearing with others in their difference from us. What it means is shutting up with the teaching of Scripture and making like we don't believe that to be true. Because it's not. Now, these are quite obvious attempts to do with the conscience what fig leaves were designed for. Paul's saying it's obvious these things aren't right. And we're going to get into trouble for that. We'll come up against people who will want to give us a very hard time for that over the course of our life, no doubt. The sinful human nature tries to justify its actions and cover its tracks and use all this as an excuse to indulge itself. But it is obvious what it's doing, says Paul. It is obvious that ain't right. It is obvious that's not supposed to be. It's not clever. It's destructive. And it's obvious. So Paul is saying, well, the Greek word he uses is phanera. What it means is it's open to public observation. It's evident. It's obvious. And you can see a little man dressed in his fig leaf has done a runner and left a cloud of dust. It's obvious. What's that? What does that symbol mean in the speech bubble? Phanera is that word. 
Fanera, made open, made plain, revealed, evident, obvious, open to public observation. All those sins, all that stuff that we're trying to cover up in all these ways by saying it's sophisticated and clever and cultured and all the rest of it, it's obvious and plain and not hidden at all. So all the attempts to hide it up, it's made plain, says Paul, it's obvious. So that's why he's in a hole. That's why he's going to run her in that picture. Does it suggests, Caleb, common knowledge, implying that nobody needs the Old Testament or the Bible in general to tell them this is wrong. Not even that bunch of Celtic tribesmen on the outer edges of the Roman Empire, assuming the North Galatian hypothesis. Right? They don't need any of this to tell them that this stuff is wrongful. The stuff that unrestrained human nature gets up to. You don't need the Bible to tell you that. You know. It's obvious. These are the works of the sinful human nature. What, what are we getting at here? It, it's not that the flesh itself, the old <coughs> human nature, is visible in itself. In so many ways, it, it works behind closed doors. But its works, what it produces, what it does, the words, the deeds in which that internal nature erupts, these are public, these are evident, these are obvious, you have been found out, says Paul. It's obvious. The sinful human nature tries to cloak itself. To cover up the fact that something seedy, lacking strength, ill-disciplined, it's what's going on. And no one is fooled.